All right, so welcome to a new video on the channel. And in this one, I thought I'll give you an actual tour of the car that I use in my, most of my videos, and also give you a brief history as to how I got into car hacking and doing all the projects that I do on this channel. So without further ado, I thought I'd give you a little tour of the car. So this is my C200 CDI, powered by the OM646 straight in the diesel engine by a Mercedes-Benz. Not a very powerful car, but it does get fairly good fuel economy. It's got nice red painted calipers. These were all rust color when I first got the car. Has a tiny bit of rust on the door here, but apart from that, for a 203 chassis, there's barely any rust on the vehicle, which I'm really happy with. As for this caliper on this side, so you can see the paint job I did originally is not that great. It's flaking off, so I'll probably repaint them again sometime this summer, make them all look shiny again. Uh, the wheels look a bit worn, but nothing too bad for the car's age. It's a 2006 vehicle, so 14, approaching 15 years old now. Under the hood, this is the OM646 diesel engine. If I take the cover off here, it's fairly clean. There is a tiny oil leak around here, but it's just weeping. I'm not really too bothered by that. It doesn't really affect the engine. Now, moving on to the interior of this vehicle. This vehicle has done 122,000 miles, so not too bad for its age. As you can see over here, this is my Android head unit that I have featured in many videos on this channel with my custom application on it. This hasn't really changed much, partly down to my university degree taking up so much time over the past couple of years. And in here we have my Arduino, which talks to the car via canvas. We have some wiring here for some RGB lighting that I was going to do, but to be honest, I might want to have another go at it with addressable RGB lighting. So that's a project for another video. As you can see, I keep the interior of this car fairly clean. I do like the interior of a car being clean rather than dirty. Now on here, you can, one feature that I have added is because I've now got agility mode enabled on the vehicle, if I toggle between, there you go, so there's agility now on the drive display. So the wallpaper changes based on what drive mode the car is in. And you can see that being mirrored on here. So there's agility mode, the A. And so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about my car. I mean, it's not a really powerful car. I just use it for some project work and just daily driving. So now I thought I'd give you a little story as to how I got into car hacking and working on various projects for this vehicle. I hope you enjoy. So, my story begins back in mid-2019. I was studying computer science at my university, and my dad was going to scrap the Mercedes and buy a new car to replace it, mainly due to the car's fuel economy getting worse over time. I told him that instead of scrapping it, I would happily take the car on and fix whatever was wrong with it, so he agreed. The issue turned out to be nothing more than a bad thermostat, which was easily replaced with the help of a friend. Since replacing the thermostat, the fuel economy in the car is far better, averaging about 40 miles per gallon in town and sometimes more than 60 miles per gallon on the motorway. As much as I enjoyed the Mercedes, I thought it was definitely lacking in the technology department. I had to run a clunky aux cable to the radio to listen to music, and there was no way for me to control the music playing on my phone via the car's integrated steering wheel controls, so naturally, being a software engineer, I decided to set out to fix this. This is where I found the W211 CAN bus hacking forum on MB World. With the help of this forum thread, I began to learn about CAN bus and reverse engineering my own car's instrument cluster to radio communication protocol, in the hopes of being able to display the track playing on my phone on the car's instrument cluster. In addition to this, I found out how to detect if the steering wheel buttons were being pressed and relay that to my phone in order to change music tracks. This was all done using two CAN bus shields, an Arduino, and a cheap Arduino Bluetooth module, which would communicate with a custom Android app I wrote on my phone. It was at this time that a member of that Mercedes hacking thread got in contact with me. Alex was the original author of the Mercedes CAN hacking GitHub repo for his W211 E-Class, and was also able to reverse engineer Mercedes' CAN bus data formats. With his help, I was able to add more features to my Arduino setup, which in turn led to the official W203 CAN bus project.
Fast forward to early 2020, and I noticed that my automatic gearbox in the car was beginning to play up. I even installed the Sonax Overlap Sleeve Kit to try and solve the issue, but it was to no avail. It got so bad that one day the gearbox decided to enter limp home mode due to not being able to shift from gears 3 to 4. This was how I learned the majority of my car hacking skills. You see, at this point I was stuck. My car wouldn't shift gears and my generic OBD2 scan tool would not communicate with the vehicle's transmission computer in order to clear the error codes. I was not going to give in and send the car to my local Mercedes dealer to fix the issue, as all the stories I've read online indicated that Mercedes would charge me more than the car is worth in order to fix this issue, despite it being a relatively simple procedure with a plug and play adapter. Therefore, I had to find my own way to do it myself. Fine. I'll do it myself. During the next few weeks, I set about writing a program which would send the diagnostic messages to the transmission's computer in order to hopefully clear the error codes stored on it. It was whilst doing this that I really f***ed up and somehow managed to brick my engine's ECU. Looking back on it now, I honestly have no clue how I did this, other than somehow it happened. So at this point, my car was completely dead. It had an engine that would no longer start due to a bricked ECU, and a gearbox that wouldn't shift gears. I then set about using my same Arduino and CAN bus shield as an adapter from Mercedes' own diagnostic software, which utilises the pass-through adapter protocol. Doing this, I learned a ton about embedded software design, as I had never really coded such a large project on a device with such little memory before. After a few weeks of development, however, my adapter worked just well enough to fix the issues I was having with my car. This was where I posted on the car hacking subreddit this video showing me flashing my engine's ECU with nothing more than an Arduino and a can shield. The software on my laptop here is Daimler's ECU flashing software called Vedemo, which is able to communicate with my Arduino as if it were a diagnostic adapter. Fortunately, this all worked, and I was able to both clear my transmission's error codes and also reflash my engine's ECU. This whole experience opened my eyes to just how proprietary the world of car diagnostics is. After I posted my video in the car hacking subreddit, a US based company called Markina got in contact with me, and they wanted to see if I could write a pass through adapter driver for their M2 OBD2 adapter. I agreed to this. Over the summer of 2020, mainly due to the ongoing pandemic, I had nothing to do. Therefore, I decided to buy myself an Android head unit and document the process of writing a custom Android app on it, which allows my car to have many features found on modern vehicles, effectively modernizing a 14 year old car. The video series about this project has been my most popular YouTube series to date. This project was designed to supersede the original Arduino based setup in my car. Can you hear, can you hear, can you hear my voice? Coming through, coming through, coming through the As summer came to an end, I had to think about my project I was going to do for my thesis at university. I looked back to my dreadful experience with car diagnostics and decided to use my thesis as an opportunity to make it easier for people to diagnose their own vehicles. I announced the project as Open Vehicle Diag, or OVD, and it would incorporate a custom cross-platform application along with a custom pass-through adapter that I was still in the process of writing for Markina's M2 adapter. Over the next 9 months, I set about writing this application and pass-through driver. This was by far the biggest project I'd ever undertaken. I spent hours upon hours reading on diagnostic protocols used in vehicles such as KWP2000 and UDS, and to be honest probably worked far too long on the project, burning myself out on multiple occasions. However, it was all worth it. After 9 months, I'm pleased to say the project was a massive success, allowing consumers to diagnose and fix their vehicle software issues on the cheap without the need for expensive diagnostic adapters or OEM software. Heck, I was even able to exploit some of the diagnostic protocols from my car's instrument cluster to achieve some interesting results. At the time of writing this, the thesis has been released. If you're interested, I highly recommend reading it. I hope you enjoyed that 
summary as to my past experiences with car hacking and project overview. If you have been paying attention to the channel, you might have been seeing me doing some streams on my next project, which I'm going to undertake. Don't worry, this will still have work done to it this summer. I've got some major plans for this head unit project. But essentially, it's to create a custom gearbox controller for the automatic gearbox in this car. The controller lives under there somewhere. Uh, you can read my post on MB World. I'll leave a link for that uh, regarding the scope of this project and what I'm trying to fix. But essentially, it's to make the shifting experience on this car far better because the stop controller has so many limitations on it partly imposed due to its design. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to share, comment and subscribe. I would like to quickly say a huge thank you to everyone on the channel who's been supporting me over the past couple of years whilst I've been working on these projects. Your support means everything to me. As usual, I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the video description if you want to sponsor me. If you don't, that's okay, no pressure. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.